Alright, first off, wanted to congratulate Don Nelson making the running gun famous in the NBA. To n it's now all-time wins leader at 1,333, just passing Lenny Wilkins. Just wanted to say congratulations. Yeah, and uh, alright, let's go on to today's topics. Going on, Tiger getting it back in the thick of things in the Masters. He's six under, which is pretty amazing. I think he's in the top five as of the end of today. And then the Redskins winning another off-season Super Bowl. Congratulations, guys. That's where it's all done in the off-season. But, uh, all right, let's talk about Tiger. Well, kind of avoided this subject for a while because I didn't really know how to approach it. But now, after Michael Jordan made the mistake, I pretty much assumed everybody was going to fall in line. So I w it really wouldn't surprise me if next you hear LeBron James or if you hear Dwayne Wade or even or even Carmelo Anthony. It really doesn't surprise me anymore. So whoever comes out next, if Tiger can fall, any of them can, man. And the thing about it was Tiger did it, and he's probably the biggest superstar on the planet, and nobody even thought to question it. That's one of those things where he was good at it. So one mistake, hey, that's that's how it all comes coming down. When it rains, it pours. But I will say this though, he did not know owe anybody an apology. He didn't know he didn't know fa old fans anything or anything like that. Cause he is a man. He makes mistakes. Granted, he made a lot and a lot and a lot of mistakes. But whatever. But he the only person he owed an apology. Uh, excuse me, an apology to was his family. I could have done without the press conference, although I watched it. I kept saying I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, but I did. And I believed him when he said it. I think he learned his lesson. He's taken some proper steps to try and win his way back. As long as he's still got Nike behind him, I think that's all that matters. And not to mention EA is still going to put out the game this coming June. But um, now that it's all out in the open, I think he's pretty much isolated himself for a while, just reevaluated things, and he's putting it behind him and focusing on golf right now. As you can see, man, he he came out it came out the gates running, man. It's almost like a Kobe Bryant effect. When Kobe had his uh, little situation going on, he was more focused than ever, and he was just killing people during that time. So, but it was also one of those things. If you don't, if he doesn't succeed, then you're always gonna be like, oh man, his head's probably not not in the game of golf. He's probably still worried about this. He needs to come out and perform well so he can get those critics off his back. But I really would like him to see, to see him win this tournament this weekend. Although it's probably not gonna happen. It'll probably go into the fourth day. It'll probably go until Sunday that he'll be in the mix. I think he'll probably fade out because he hasn't been on the golf course. He hasn't really been in those pressure situations in a while on the golf course. Not surrounding life, but in those pressure situations going around the golf course. But, all right, man. Uh, good luck to Tiger. Hope he pulls through. And on to those... I don't understand what the Redskins were thinking. From all the people I've talked to who are diehard Redskins fans, they don't really understand the move either. Yeah, it's a bit of an upgrade at the quarterback position, but I mean, J Jason Campbell's been put through so much, man, and he he could just as easily have acted like a Jay Cutler and been ranting and raving and be like, you know what, get me the get me the fire out of here, or all he can all he can do is just do his job and with the best he's got. And uh, I will say this though, you can win with Jason Campbell if you protect him. And what was Don, what was Jason Campbell doing half the time? Looking up at the sky, wondering why, where, where's my line, where's my protection? But I would also, Donovan McNabb is coming into an amusing situation. They keep saying they changed the culture around here. They're going to let Mike Shanahan and Bruce Allen take care of things. Nah, not the case, because they're pretty much taking over where Dan Snyder left off. They went out and they traded away some more draft picks on a guy who's probably in the decline of his career. And as much as I love Donovan McNabb, he st he gets hurt a lot. He did take the he took the Eagles to the playoffs last year, and eventually I think that's what the Skins want to be. But you also got to remember he's had much more weapons around him in Philly. I know I said it earlier in my last video, but he's got he had once again he had Brian Westbrook, Lashawn McCoy, Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, and an offensive line that was actually average and good. They would protect Donovan McNabb. This line can't do that. So to to waste that pick, uh, to waste that second round pick on a division rival, it's ju it just boggles my mind. Why you're chasing within the division is beyond me anyway, but that's that's a different topic. But um, 
but the, also the addition of Larry Johnson, the guy, the guy, he's a he's a hard nosed runner. He's run, he's a big running back. But they already have that. And Clinton Portis may be a bit of a head case, but Larry's a head case too. And then you add Willie Parker, who's also he was fast in Pittsburgh, but you saw what happened to him. He can't carry the ball like that. So I mean, hopefully. Look, I, I don't I don't want to be wrong about this because I can't stand the Redskins, but I can look at it from a logical perspective. They have three three starting running backs who are in somewhat of a Pro Bowl, and you don't think that egos are going to get in the way of who gets the most carries. I mean, come on! I hope one of them's got to be on their way out. I don't think I don't think you can sign Larry Johnson and Willie Parker and expect Clinton Portis to still be there. I mean, it, it's someone's got to go. And uh, what else? Um, fans keep yeah, the only way that you're going to get through to these guys is you got to hurt his pocket. He, he won't do anything different. Dan Snyder will not do anything differently until you stop going to the game. But the Redskins tickets are always selling out because this this town loves its football team. But you got to keep just keep riding them and riding them and riding them. You're not because from the buzz I'm getting around here that it's, if Bradford drops to that number four pick, they're going to pick him. Or if they they're, have their high, um, mindset on Jimmy Clausen, if they don't use a left tackle with that number four overall pick, it's crazy. And of course, you can probably always pick up a guy late, uh, a lineman later in the draft. But who's to say he's going to be a, a quality guy as a number four overall pick? There's always humongous upside, but there, it's not like you're drafting a quarterback. Here. It's not like you're drafting a franchise guy here. You just want a guy that can be stabilize that offensive line who was horrendous last year. But I mean, once again, feel bad for Jason Campbell. He's handled everything with class. Every every time they bring somebody in, and he. He doesn't complain or anything. He understands the business side of it, but he's a better man than me because I know it's like, you know what? He's had, I think, every year of upper-level football from college. Every year from college, he's had a different offensive system to this year, and he's actually performed pretty well. Could you imagine if he had one system once he got to the Redskins or if he just stayed at Auburn? He may have been a top-10 pick instead of a late first-round pick, but hey, I'm a fan. They probably know more than we do. We'll see what happens. Take care, guys.